news that wearing face masks in shops is to be made compulsory. We heard that yesterday. That's going to happen from the 24th of July. Uh, mixed reviews on that one. But in the one uh, for one in ten people suffering with claustrophobia, those new rules have literally left them terrified. Yeah, and Hilary Freeman is one of those people. Uh, she calls it maskophobia, um, and she's joining us now uh, from her home in London. Good morning, Hilary. Um, morning. So, do, do you you are a claustrophobic? You knew that before this the the compulsory mask rule came into effect. Yeah, I mean, I knew I knew I was claustrophobic, but it was never a huge problem because I was never in a situation that I couldn't control before. Yeah. Um, I'm not. I'm not really. I'm not somebody who's particularly bothered by um, being in a lift or something. It's more having, you know, having my face um, covered or not being able to move, feeling trapped. Yeah. yeah. And that's the problem with masks, and obviously the fact that I can't choose whether or not to wear one. Um, uh, I think, I think a, lot, a lot of people will be listening to you, Hillary, and they will begin to identify with this because you, like many others, may have thought the hard bit of this pandemic may have been behind you but for you and a lot of others it's just beginning the hard bit the tough bit isn't it yeah sure i mean before you were able to go to the supermarket without wearing a mask um you know and, and i thought with everything opening up that that life was starting to get back a bit more to normal but for me uh, because i find wearing masks so absolutely awful um i feel now that i'm not really going to be able to go out at all other than just for a walk outside i won't be able to go to shops i won't be able to go to supermarkets uh, I won't be able to travel anywhere. So, yes, for me, it feels kind of like the lockdown is just just starting properly. Hilary, a lot of, of people say, you know, they find the masks uncomfortable, they're a bit hot. But describe to people exactly how you feel, because it's quite extreme, isn't it? People might be thinking, well, listen, we all, none of us like them very much, but just describe how it affects you wearing a mask. Um, it makes me totally panic so um i just feel like i can't breathe um i find myself holding my breath um and then i start to hyperventilate um i start to get dizzy and i start to feel like i'm going to black out um i feel sick it's just it's just a horrible feeling of, of just sheer panic really okay now we're going to break nick and eva speakman in on, on this before i do i just i just want to say to you hillary you will get people who are saying Get over yourself. You're only being asked to wear a mask, uh, which is not going to be worse than catching coronavirus. Uh, but for you, the immediacy of this, the fear of this is very, very real. Yeah, I mean, it, it's I've tried, you know, I, I, I appreciate, you know, that I think if if somebody said to you, I'm afraid of heights, you wouldn't like say go and jump off a building, you know, yeah. go and do a bungee jump. And I think that's the problem. It's being told we've well, got to wear a mask now. Just just go and put it on and go out now. And um, there's mm -hmm. no time to get used to it. There's no time to prepare. It's it's just been imposed on you. And you know, if you have got a phobia, it's a real thing, and it doesn't. You can't just get over it in one day. No, and, and people that we know deal with people with phobias all the time and very successfully are Nick and Eva Speakman, and they're also joining us this morning. And Nick and Eva, good morning. Um, you're saying also, you know, you've got a lot of people who are in a similar position to Hillary contacting you already. Yeah, and I've got to say, really feel for you, Hillary, because um, like you say, it, it's overwhelming. I mean, the human body and the brain, our primary instinct is survival. And if you feel that um, a resource that you need is threatening that survival, then you're going to have the kind of response that you're having. It's almost like your internal alarm. If you were to burn toast, the fire alarm goes off and you react accordingly. But your internal alarm is going off and it's a false alarm in essence. Um, and mask wearing now is putting lots of people on, on high alert because they're now feeling that they're not going to be able to go out. They're, they've lost um, a sort of a part of their freedom. And so, yeah, you're definitely not alone. And, and it's your claustrophobia, really, Hillary, that, that needs to be addressed. Yeah, Nick, how, how can you address that? We're saying, you know, that it's going to be compulsory on the 24th of July. And Hillary's, you know, guessing to the point where she, she, she feels like she won't be able to go out and do anything because her anxiety is so high. Yeah, I mean, obviously, the best way to, for Hillary to deal with this is to deal with her claustrophobia. And the way of doing that is to find out actually when it started, because the good news is no one is born with a phobia. So this is a definite learning. But in the interim, what Hillary can do is... is 
distinguish the difference between claustrophobia, which by definition is a fear of enclosed spaces, and actually wearing a mask, because wearing a mask is not a fear of enclosed spaces. Mm -hmm. So to distinguish between the two, one of the things that you could do is go out into the open, in, in the middle of a field, for example, uh, and start putting the mask on and then taking it off and putting it on, because essentially she can, doing that, distinguish the difference between the two. Yeah, I think that it's it's got to, you've got to change your perception from restriction to protection and, and gradual exposure um, and, and you've got to take it at your pace because you, you're one of the things that I guess is elevating your anxiety lack is, of control. Is, is this lack of control and being told you've got to do it so in the interim and it's going to be about tolerance until you sort that claustrophobia out but that tolerance can be can be elevated with gradual exposure so that can be that you will sort of maybe put a mask over one ear put it across your chest your chin but all the time it's not just gradual exposure it's gradual exposure with reassurance i can breathe i'm in control this is protection not restriction so it's almost like that you're having to appease yourself and support yourself through through it until uh, you become more confident with now, that mask now, Hillary, wearing. Is there, is there anything you're hearing? I'm talking to you, but I'm also addressing people who may be uh, watching today. But is there anything, Hillary, that you're hearing that you think, that's feasible, I can give that a go, I could see me doing that exercise? Yeah, sure. I mean, I'm I'm perfectly willing to try that, and I have, you know, I have tried to wear masks and tried different types of masks, to, you know, and I do find that um, some of them are worse than others. Um, but I mean, the thing is, if you go, if you, if you're claustrophobic and you don't like going into lifts, go into lifts and you know, gradually realize that nothing's gonna, bad's going to happen to you in a lift. But the sensation of having something tight across your nose and mouth. You know, even if you're not phobic, a lot of people don't mm. find that very pleasant. And it, is, it does make you hot and feel uncomfortable. So it's much more difficult to get over it in, in that sense, because there is a, an actual issue there. It's not, you know, as well as the claustrophobia, there is the discomfort. And, and it does make you feel less able to breathe normally. Mm. So I, th that's I think, that yeah, issue. I think, Nick and Eva, a lot of people, you might, you know, their, their claustrophobia might not be as extreme as Hillary's, but a lot of people you talk to say, you know, as soon as I put the mask on, I'm the same. I put it on and immediately I start thinking about my breathing. Normally you don't think about breathing, do you? Just breathe. But as soon as you have that on, I, I get a bit, my breath gets, out of kilter it's a bit hot and I start to have that feeling of panic I mean I haven't and I you know not as extreme as Hillary's at all but I think a lot of people watching will identify so tips for all of us should we maybe be practicing with the mask at home like build up the time but you can take it off if you need to I think that's very important and even wearing the mask around the house and just knowing and reassuring yourself all the time that you are in control and when it comes to going outside plan what you're going to do you know so you can maybe go uh you know into one shop and then you know that you can come out of the shop you can sit in your car you can take the mask off and, and have that for a while before you go in the next shop so so being so planning allows you to feel more in, in control yeah also controlling your breathing before you put the mask on so you can do sort of diaphragmatic breathing and um, so you're breathing in for like maybe for the count of four you hold it for a count of about six or seven and then you do a long exhale but another really great tip and particularly for for well for everybody and a view hillary that you can try um, and that is a, a really fast track way of creating alpha waves in the brain those are the ones that we would normally um sort of encourage to create when we do things like mindfulness and yoga and relax but a fast track method to get there very quickly is to do um, a few sighs and that is literally you just breathing in for a count of three or four and then you're doing a huge sigh and you're going to really sort of relax your body let your shoulders go and do that three or four times and what that does is that kind of tricks the brain into actually this is over and everything's okay which is when we would normally instinctively sigh mm, well. so do that before you put the mask on so calm yourself before you put it on Yes. Yeah. Yes, and then you can use it as well once you've got the mask on, but you'd be better off then starting to count that breathing in. Mm. Um, so it is, side before, even imagine yourself wearing the mask and using the sign technique. It's just a little fast-track method to, mm. to sort of reassure yourself. Guys, really appreciate that. Hilary, we hope there's some uh, compensation in that for you, some uh, hope that you will, you will do well with uh, what lies ahead, and we wish you all the best. Thank you for telling us your story. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Nick and Eva, thank you as always for your advice. Oh, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you.